I have never seen two people arguing past each other, coming to completely different conclusions because they think so completely differently, quite like Richard Dawkins and Jordan Peterson. It was as if they were speaking totally different languages. It was like watching two men trying to work together to solve a puzzle, but one of them only speaks German, while the other only speaks jazz or French poetry or Italian opera. Fortunately, they did briefly address what I would regard as the hands-down, bar none, most important issue they could possibly address, and we'll go through that section. Apart from that, they were able to understand each other on a few points, but ultimately agreed that their minds just don't work the same. Like, I do think that your temperamental tack and my temperamental tack are are different. They're generally awesome, they're different. different. Yeah. You know, we have a different kind of mind, I think. The way that Dr. Dawkins and I look at the situation are really quite different and at many, many, many levels. I think we just have to agree that we have different kinds of minds and, and you're interested in symbols and I'm interested in facts. Dawkins kept insisting that he only cares about the facts. The facts that I care about are the facts that are true and have evidence. I care about facts. That has nothing to do with the truth value. And what I care about is the truth value. I see no, no truth value. Tr the truth of science is the truth that gets us to the moon. I'm not interested in dragons. I'm interested in, re in reality. Jordan Peterson, by contrast, focuses on stories and symbols and meaning. Dr. Peterson, you're drunk on symbols. Yes, you mentioned. I've, 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 heard, your, I've heard that comment, yeah. Yes. We have to prioritize the facts. That's a value hierarchy. And that's all coded in the story. The reference I made to Harry Potter, the reference I made to the Lord of the Rings and to the Avengers, these aren't casual references. We see the world through a story. I think that at bottom, truth is unified. And what that's going to mean eventually is that the world of value and the world of fact coincide in some manner that we don't yet understand. And it seems to me it's not unreasonable to note that that's the fundamental story of humanity. But Peterson made an important point about facts. There's no evidence whatsoever from the scientific perspective that we can orient ourselves in the world merely in consequence of the facts. Sure. And that's a fact. Man does not live by facts alone. Now for the most important part. Dawkins was arguing that scientific enterprises have the relevant credentials because scientific claims have predictive power. And he wanted to know what similar credentials something like the Bible would have. That's when Peterson drew attention to the fact that Dawkins considers himself a cultural Christian. You made a statement a couple of months ago that I found very interesting. And I don't claim to understand it, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot with it. You said that you were a cultural Christian. Okay, and so that raised a number of questions in my mind. Dawkins has been calling himself a cultural Christian for years, but for some reason it went viral more recently. So Peterson is probably referring to some comments like this. We are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I love hymns and Christmas carols, and I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. I find that I like to live in a culturally Christian country. And Peterson thinks that if there's something about Christianity that even Dawkins likes, maybe that's a kind of credential. It seemed to me that your proclamation that you were a cultural Christian was a recognition um, and a, and a statement that you had found something in the culture that had been derived from Christianity that you had an affinity with. Dawkins made it clear in the Cultural Christianity interview that he thinks the claims of Christianity are complete nonsense. But he did sound, at times, as if he liked what we might call the fruits of Christianity, at least more so than the fruits of certain other ideologies. If I had to choose between Christianity and Islam, I'd choose Christianity every single time. I mean, it seems to me to be a fundamentally decent religion, insofar as Christianity can be seen as a bulwark against Islam. I think it's, it's a very good thing. I mean, in Africa, for example, um, where you have missionaries of both faiths operating, um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm on Team Christian side as far as that's concerned. But does that really mean Dawkins is giving a thumbs up to Christianity? Well, what do you think that Christianity got right that allows you to make a statement like that? I mean, I know, I know that there's differences, perhaps, in what we both think about the ultimate veracity of the biblical stories. Maybe there isn't differences. Like, it would take a lot of conversation to figure this out. But, but what did you mean by that? Like, what do you think that Christianity got right that would enable you to make a statement like that? Virtually nothing. Virtually nothing. In your face, Christians. I meant by that no more than that I'm brought up in a Christian culture. I went to Christian schools. I therefore know my way around the Bible. I know my, my way around the Book of Common Prayer. I, I, know, I know the hymns. Um, that's all. I, I don't value Christianity as a truth system at all. As much as all the Dawkins drones were cheering when he said what he really meant by calling himself a cultural Christian, He's spouting nonsense here. He couldn't have simply been saying that he went to Christian schools and that he knows his way around a Bible, because he also suggested that Christianity is better for the world than Islam. But Peterson pushes back. Okay, so let me, let me ask you about that, because maybe that's true and perhaps it's not. So the first question is, like, do you think that there are any marked differences between cultural traditions that would enable you to rank order them in terms of their ethical validity. Yes, so, I do. So Dawkins believes that you can rank different cultures, different systems, different ideologies based on their ethical validity. I wonder what scientific facts allow Dawkins to do this ranking. Okay, so for example, we could contrast Mainstream UK Christianity with Islamic fundamentalism. Yes. Okay, so there's a hierarchy. There is a hierarchy. Okay. Notice, Dawkins just admitted that he's not simply claiming that he went to Christian schools and that he knows his way around a Bible. He agrees that there's a hierarchy of systems. Some systems are better than others. Some systems are more ethically valid than others. But this raises a really, really important question. In fact, this may be the most important question atheists need to address in the world today. Because until atheists can give a serious answer to this question, they're going to be paving the way for Islam. Okay, so there's a hierarchy. There is a hierarchy. Okay, a hierarchy that points to what? A hierarchy that points to what? Let's say Islam is down here in this hierarchy. Christianity would be up a little higher. Dawkins would presumably put an enlightened scientific atheism much higher than Christianity or Islam. There's a hierarchy. What's that pointing towards? What makes Dawkins correct about this hierarchy of ethical validity? What verifiable scientific facts confirm this ordering? There are two main possibilities. When Dawkins says, this system is better than that system, and this system is best, he either means, I'm just giving you my personal preferences here, but there's really no correct answer, or he means that there's something that makes his ranking true. If he's just giving his personal preferences, what would make the personal preferences of Richard Dawkins more valid than the personal preferences of P. Diddy or Andrew Tate or Ali Dawa? If there's something that makes his hierarchy correct, what is it? Because it's not science. I think what Peterson would say is something like this. If there's a real hierarchy, B is really better than A, C is really better than B, and so on, then this hierarchy is pointing to something. And whatever it's pointing to, that's what I call God. But let's see what Dawkins has to say. Again, here's the question. Okay, so there's a hierarchy. There is a hierarchy. A hierarchy that points to what? And now for Professor Dawkins. Uh, well, in the case of Islam, uh, I dislike any religion which punishes apostasy with death, that throws gay people off high buildings, that practices clitoridectomy. Um, 
that that seems to me to place Islam on a lower level than Christianity. But that's not to say anything very positive about Christianity. Did you catch that? He dislikes some things about Islam. In the case of Islam, uh, I dislike. I dislike. I dislike any religion which punishes apostasy with death. Dawkins gives a list of things he dislikes about Islam. Muslims could give a list of things they dislike about atheism. Are we just giving lists of things that we personally like or dislike, or is there something that makes one set of likes or dislikes more ethically valid than another set of likes or dislikes? Well, it might it might be to say something positive about Christianity. Like I think that question is open because you might ask yourself. What did Christianity get right that led it away from those particular presumptions and towards something that you regard as more ethically appropriate? Like this isn't a trivial question. It's a very I, modest claim. It's not a trivial question at all. It's an extremely important question. When Dawkins says this system is better than that system, does he think his claim is true? If so, what makes it true? It's not science, so it's something else. What is it? What explanatory resources does Dawkins have available in his worldview that can account for this? And if there's nothing in his worldview that can possibly account for what he believes, he needs to be made aware of that. But as is so frequently the case, Dawkins misses the point. It's a very modest claim. Uh, there's not very much. I mean. To be better than a religion that throws gay people off high buildings is not really a very a virtuous achievement. He just doesn't get it. He says being better than Islam just isn't very impressive. But that's not the point. If something is better than something else, what makes it better? Your personal preferences? So, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's true because if you look at the barbarism that characterizes the human past, you might think that any progression whatsoever towards something approximating mercy and tolerance is nothing short of a bloody miracle. True. It's impressive that people can improve. But now Peterson is getting a bit sidetracked himself. The real issue is, when we say that System X is an improvement on System Y, what do we mean? Are we just saying what we personally prefer? Or are we saying something that's actually true? If it's true, what makes it true? But Peterson does point out how amazing it is that we've gotten to a stage where the improvements are taken for granted. And we think that it's just obvious that our current way of doing things is superior to more barbaric ways of doing things. Well, like people are pretty pretty ruthless, and so are our chimpanzee cousins. Yes, they are. Right, so yes. so we move forward into the light with great difficulty, yes, and yes. the fact that we can take that for granted now and that it seems self-evident and deserving of faint praise, it's not so clear to me that that's, that that's a reasonable proposition. Okay. As usual, Dawkins not only misses the point, but derails it completely. Let's, let's grant the, the faint praise, but that has nothing to do with the truth value. And what I care about is the truth value. I see no, no truth value in the claims of Christianity, the virgin birth, the resurrection, the miracles. Do you believe in any of those? Dawkins only cares about the truth. And he doesn't see how the claims of Christianity can be true. But he was being asked about whether his claims about this being better than that are true. And if they're true, what makes them true? And if they're not true, why does a person who claims to only care about what's true care about them? He dodges all of this and starts criticizing Christianity again. And his fans love it. We've been asking the same questions for years. These aren't stupid questions. They're very, very important questions whose answers are crucial to Western civilization as the world changes. But when we ask these very, very important questions, atheists either don't understand them, or they dodge them, or they give really, really stupid answers. This issue 
that Dawkins and Peterson briefly addressed, accounting for the hierarchy, as far as I'm concerned, should have been the entire focus of the discussion, because the complete inability of Dawkins to account for his own views while pretending that he only cares about facts is one of the primary factors that's destroying Western civilization. I'll try to make this as simple and clear as I can. So simple and so clear that even a few Dawkins fans might finally be able to understand it. If you have one group that says, we've been commanded by Allah, the creator of the universe, to violently subjugate you, to crush and humiliate you, to conquer your land, and we will be rewarded with virgins in paradise. And this group is coming against a different group that says, well, we personally dislike some of your views. Our preferences are somewhat different from yours, but we can't even say why our views are right, so we'll just calmly disagree. One of those groups is going to eat the other group alive. Guess which group Dawkins is in. <laughs>